And depression, it's a, even though it is the, the mother load where anxiety and rage exist within and come out in different ways, and I consider anxiety to be, you know, a fear about what might happen and depression to be fear or disappointment in what didn't happen. But I feel that there are so many different reasons that people could have depression, and I'm just going to name a few, and this is why I feel this documentary was important. It could be nutrition, it could be gut bacteria, it could be the fact that we, in America especially, the food is so poisoned. It could be chemical imbalance, it could be childhood trauma, genetics, hereditary. It could be some people don't completely understand but have an inkling of the bloodlust and murder and war that is intrinsic in all of our bloodlines. It could be existential. So I'm not in this documentary trying to solve these problems. I'm trying to understand them. And so a 10 minute trailer was very heavy, but then when it was up to 60 minutes, what was interesting is it was so poetic. And, and most of the people said it was one of the best therapy sessions they've ever had, which to me was great because, and at one point I asked a friend, I'm like, do you think there's a key that if you found it, it would open a door that you could walk through the other side and be free of all of this. And then I said to myself, <laughs> actually, I think I found that key. Because my friend was like, wow, I wish. And I think the key for me is I began speaking about my own trauma, never thinking it was the worst trauma, thinking that trauma is so much greater and it's so spread out over a vast terrain and it's so historical and familial and ingrained within us, even if we've had a happy family life, there is still bloodshed and war and murder in all of our bloodlines. So some might pick up on that even if they've had a happy childhood. Uh, we know all the other multiplicity of reasons that people can be uh, inflicted upon, affected with, and, and, and basically brutalized by the insensitivity, stupidity, the cycle of trauma, etc. But I think knowing as I started to know at 9, 10, 11, 12 that I had to talk about it, not because mine was so special, but because my trauma wasn't so special, to try to give voice to it, that through this, and I've always called it public psychotherapy, what I do, that it naturally, and wanting to not, look, just because you want to get over the cycle of abuse and you intellectually want to get over it, doesn't mean you can. But at least you have the conscious effort to know Trauma is so much bigger, and I think a lot of times when people have this childhood trauma, they always think it's only happened to them, and there's a lot of shame, and a lot of insecurity, and a lot of embarrassment. But when I realized at a very early age that, oh no, it's not just me, it's almost everybody, in one form or another, and on a massive scale, and on a global scale, and that gave me the power to talk about it. And in that sense, help me to not be depressed. I mean, I had to do a lot of my own deprogramming as well because I think there are emotions that are like parasites. There are emotions that are greedy. Trauma is greedy. You might think you've gotten over it, but it's greedy. It always wants more of itself. I think anxiety is an irritant that then suddenly when you don't have it, it might start going, what about me? What about me? And, and the way that it just can stress trauma, the release of the chemicals that happens, especially as a child, and I'm going to give this one last example and we can go on to something else. For instance, in animals, if an animal, say a deer and a cougar, the deer freezes, plays possum, maybe the cougar just goes away, okay? Well, as soon as the cougar leaves, the deer has a full body shakeout, like a full body shakeout, so that the trauma, the energy of the trauma, actually is released. This is why I think a lot of people that have had childhood trauma become sex addicts, that they're looking for the ultimate orgasm to shake out the horror, the trauma of existence. They also are doing studies and these exercises with soldiers that have PTSD and complex PTSD where it is a way of getting your muscles to contract in this vibratory manner in order to try to release 
the poison of trauma which lives in the body. So anyway, that's what I was doing <laughs> and enjoying myself. One of the things during the Black Plague, I was investigating the mental plague that so many people have. And I'm not, I don't mean to take any of it lightly or when I say my wonderful friends, you miserable cunts, I fucking mean that, but I love you anyway. And I'm amazed that so many people with so many problems, who I might not even realize they have these problems before I ask them, some it's more obvious, I was like, why am I the magnet for this? But it becomes obvious why I'm the magnet for it because I don't have some of those things and maybe people want to rub up against it, which is why I'm here, so you can rub up against me. And it smells really good the closer you get. I'm Lydia Lunch. I'm taking over the University of Chicago Bears. Thank you very much. <laughs>